Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope that everyone has had a great break and you're back at work and getting ready for a big year. If you're still on break, I hope that you're enjoying uh, time with your family and friends and staying safe. This is the fourth video in a series that I'm putting together covering HR as a career. And in this video, I'll be talking to you about organizational development. So I'll talk to you about a definition of organizational development. I'll talk to you about a concept called action research and then I'll also go through some of the things that organizational development does. Just a quick bit of housekeeping before we get into that, you might notice a rather unsightly scratch on my head. I went to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu last night and it seems that I zigged when I should have zagged and I ended up getting punched in the head, but it wasn't anything too serious. It was obviously accidental, but I just thought I'd uh, give a quick explanation regarding that. But I like to make a video every week, so the show must go on. So. I'm filming with that scratch there, but I'm hoping it's not too distracting for anyone. So back to the content. This has been a really exciting video for me to put together this week because I've actually just moved into a role as a senior organizational development advisor, as some of you may have seen on LinkedIn. If we haven't yet connected on LinkedIn, please do add me and, and also on Twitter as well. It's been really cool making connections and forming new relationships across the world with people from Russia and Brazil and New York and even Egypt. And it's been really nice to have some encouraging comments from people. I've only been making videos since June 2020 and it's been a great experience so far. So I just wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone who is watching and commenting. So over the course of my career, I have done different elements of organizational development. I've done different pieces of OD work as part of my role as a generalist business partner, but I've never operated as a true specialist. My career path coming out of university has been solely as a generalist, which is something that I recommend for a lot of HR generalists is to get a good grounding in generalist HR before you start to specialize. Obviously that's up to you as an individual, but I think once you specialize, it's good to have a, a broad generalist HR experience base to draw from. So what I wanted to do is just go back to basics and just update my knowledge a little bit. So that's what this video will be covering. There are many different definitions for organizational development, but one that is common and key that comes through in terms of the research that I was doing is that it's a way to change organizations and people for the better, to help them contribute in a more effective way and lead to a competitive advantage. To go into a little bit more detail, organizational development activities are really focused on changing things from a systems perspective. So they'll look at a whole uh, department or a whole structure of an organization and they really want to change things in a systemic, in a, in a systems based way. So OD activities, they're not just made up on the fly based on what an OD professional thinks should happen or, or a gut feeling. It's often based on the identification of an issue or a problem that needs to be solved through research and, and rigorous analysis. And then once you've identified that issue, then as an OD professional, you'll come up with an intervention which is designed to improve the organization or to improve the employee's experience or their ability to get things done. And then once you've implemented that, it's a case of understanding whether the intervention was effective or whether you need to go back and review what you did and, and maybe tweak things a little bit. So it's important to note, like a lot of things in HR, OD doesn't actually own the problem, but they help organizations to essentially help themselves. So you can't discuss OD without discussing action research, which is a concept that was developed by Kurt Lewin, who is widely thought of as the founding father of OD. So as a little bit of a history lesson of Kurt Lewin, he was born in 1898 and he died in 1947. Kurt Lewin was instrumental in developing OD to what it is today. So back in the early 1940s, he was conducting research in organizations and trying to develop ways of doing things and ways of making organizations better. He was experimenting using a process of planning, taking action, and then looking at results and then reviewing it. And that process there is what is now commonly referred to as action research, which has obviously been built upon since his research back in the early 40s. And it's something that is used by a lot of OD professionals today. So action research essentially involves three steps. So there's planning, action, and results. So those three steps align to Lewin's change model, which is unfreezing, changing and refreezing. 
It's probably best to explain this model using a bit of a diagram. So I'm gonna draw one for you shortly. But before I did that, I thought I would explain why I think drawing things and recreating things is a great way to learn. Back when I was completing my Master of Marketing at university, I used to use mnemonic devices to remember things. So I'd go through each topic, I'd make my notes, and then I would turn those notes into abbreviations or mnemonic devices, which would summarize an entire concept into a few words. And by the end of my exam revision, I would have a couple pages pages double-sided or sometimes I'd be able to get the whole semester onto two pages where I would have all these different acronyms that wouldn't make sense to anyone but made sense to me and helped me to remember things. So I'll show you an example of one now so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about and that'll make it easy to understand uh, the, the model that I'm going to show you shortly. So as you can see on the screen here this is an actual example of one of my marketing cheat sheets that I put together at the end of one of my subjects when I was preparing for an exam. So I'll just draw your attention to the one on the top left the consumer decision-making process. So I distilled that down to an acronym, which is, as you can see there, Pris A, P to P, MPAL, which obviously it doesn't make any sense at all. But I remember at the time I was able to memorize just that acronym by itself. And then when I'd get into my exam, I'd write all of these out really quickly and furiously. So I wouldn't forget them. I, and I'd write them out on the, the note paper. And then as I was writing my exam, I'd be able to refer to them. Obviously everyone is different, but I found this to be a really effective method to remember things. And that's what I'm going to show you now when I'm going through the action research model. The acronym that I have put together to remember the action research model is ITOPAR, UCR, PREL DG FIAP, LEPUS CHADABAJUM. Or for short, the FLINSER DEFER. It does sound a little bit like I'm having a stroke. I am not, but that acronym there is something that I've put together that will help me to remember how to draw the action research model, which I'll show you now. I am using good notes now, uh, which if you are thinking about switching from a paper notebook to an iPad app, I highly recommend GoodNotes. I have put together a video covering some tips in terms of making the switch. So I'll include that in the description as well. So I'll just write down the bottom here, ITOPAR UCR. It's probably a bit big, so I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. One of the, the obvious examples of writing on an iPad, you can just change things around so easily. The next part is PREL DE G VAP LEPUS SHERBIDIGIM. Okay, so I've got the mnemonic device written out. So what I'm gonna do now is just populate the model itself. So I know at the top, it's going to be across the top, input, transformation, and output. So then I might just change the color here to red and I'll just zoom in a little bit. And the first stage is planning. Next one is action. And the next one is results. The final part, I think I might make this one a different color again, and I'll go with green, is Lewin's change model, which is down the bottom here. You have unfreezing, changing, and refreezing. So in terms of the unfreezing, the planning stage, what I'm going to do is I might just get rid of this section here so it's easier for me to see. I'm just gonna bring that up here. So the first one is preliminary diagnosis, data gathering, then you have feedback on results and action planning. So those are the types of activities that you would do in that first stage, that planning stage where you're starting to discuss with the organization, what is the issue that we have here and, and what, could we, what do we think we could do about it. The next stage is action planning, where you look at learning processes and then you look at action planning and then action steps. The final one in results is change in behavior, where you're hoping that something has changed and you're hoping to refreeze and, and reinforce and lock those behaviors in. And then there is again, data gathering to make sure that the change that you wanted to implement was actually effective. And then the final one is measurement. The action research model is circular in, na in nature. And so there are various feedback loops, which I'll just add as well where you're at each stage in the process, you're trying to determine whether you're doing the right thing and you're giving feedback to the previous stage of the process to see whether you need to go back and change the intervention or change what you're doing. So now that we have a complete model, I just wanted to highlight the aspects of Lewin's change model in terms of unfreezing, changing and refreezing. So in the unfreezing stage here, that is the stage in which the organization or the individuals start to explore a different way of doing things. In the changing stage here, that is where 
the action planning occurs and where you're trying to find a new way of doing something, a new behavior. The final stage, refreezing, that is where the organization embeds the behavior and they try to reinforce it. So I'm not gonna go through the whole model in detail because I think that would make the video too long, but uh, I will include some links in the description if you'd like to learn more about it and read some of the things that I was reading as part of the research for this video. So in terms of what OD does, it is going to be different based on the organization that it is operating in, but I wanted to go through a few interventions that I've had experience in and ones that I think are quite powerful as well. So I think the training courses are one of the most satisfying parts of a career in HR and OD. It's really nice to see employees learn something new and apply it and then come back to you later and say, oh, you know, that training course, it really made a difference in terms of what I was going through at work, but it also helped me in my personal life because a lot of the training courses that I have facilitated, so I facilitated unconscious bias, also taught crucial conversations and crucial accountability. And those courses, they really make a difference in not only an employee's professional life, but a personal life as well. So I'll include a link in the description to some of the books that the training courses are built from. And if you get the opportunity to have a read through them, they are really quite powerful and they can make a big difference in your life. The second intervention that I wanted to talk to you about is organizational assessments or engagement surveys as they are most commonly seen in organizations. So an engagement survey is where an organization will send a survey to all of their employees asking them various questions about how they feel about different processes in the organization. Is there too much structure? Are there too many rules? How is decision making made? What do they think about leaders? And many other different topics. And once the results are finalized, OD is generally the custodian of the engagement survey process. And they're responsible for analyzing the results, obviously working closely with the business leaders and helping them to work through the results and come up with action plans and ways to improve the results that they've received. So the final intervention that I wanted to talk about is team building and workshops. So this is probably one of the most commonly known interventions from an OD perspective. I'm sure that many of you have been to a team building day or a team building workshop where you and your team members have gotten together and maybe tried to build a tower out of straws and sticks to hold a marshmallow. I know I've done a few of those in my time. And whilst they can be a bit of fun, the logic and the theory behind them is that working on something together as a team will help you to learn and understand how each other works and how you can work better together. I've participated and also facilitated other more structured team building workshops. One that I've done quite a bit is where employees complete a personality profile assessment and then as a group we come together and look at how different aspects of personality work. So during the personality workshop we will often look at how one person's personality might have a different view on things to someone else's personality and how can we work together as a team to work through those different aspects and to get things done. So if you are interested in personality profiling, I have made another video where I go through the Facet 5 personality tool, which is the tool that I'm accredited in. Uh, it's one of the best tools that I've used as an HR practitioner. It's a pleasure to debrief as a practitioner, but it's also something that is really powerful and easy for employees to understand. So I'll include a link in the description if you'd like to watch that. Okay, so that's been a quick overview of organizational development. I really hope that that has been useful for you and you've learned something about OD that you maybe weren't aware of before. If you are new to HR as a career and you're thinking about where you wanna go in the future and what you might wanna specialize in, I'm hoping that this has given you an idea of different things that you can do. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video and I will see you in the next one.